So just uh, so let's look at this uh, throughout Scripture, and we want to. No, I dropped it. Uh, I want to uh, for us to see the consistency all the way through, and understand. Uh, many people don't follow eschatology through all the way through, and then we end up with these um, uh, I call out of whack interpretations, <laughs> and. Uh, I've, I've, I've found things to be very interesting that are said, uh, and it doesn't line up. Well, it's lined up for you. Uh, I don't know why everybody wants to make it complicated. I really don't. Okay, chapter 2, Daniel 2, verse 44. In the days that these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Okay, now catch the properties of this kingdom please. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all those kingdoms and, here comes our word, it's coming, and it shall stand forever. Forever. This kingdom has a lot of properties to it that none of these other kingdoms, Gentile world powers, they come, they go. They begin, they end. Uh, and it's what God told Daniel to tell the kings. The Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. He builds up. He tears down. He rises, raises up. And he tears down um, and puts down. Uh, God is running. But this kingdom, it's different than all those kingdoms. It's not the head of gold. It's not the breastplate of silver. Uh, it's not the precious metals and the clay. No, not this kingdom. And you say, well, pastor, why are we paying attention to this? Because it's part of the interpretation. And we need to get clear in our mind uh, this, these particulars of this kingdom. It's what's being revealed. Look in chapter 7 now of Daniel. Chapter 7 to grandson Belshazzar. Um, this, uh, this passage is given. A look in chapter 7. And in verse 27, I'm going to have to back up a little bit on this one. In verse 25 at least. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Who's this? The one that's always speaking great words. The Antichrist. The Antichrist, that's right. And think to change the times and the laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times. One day I'll have a message on that. That's just ecclesiastical language. Uh, so when you come across it again, it, you, won't, you won't shake your head and say, what? I look at verse 26. But the, judgment shall, but the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion, and consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion, and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven, shall be given unto the people of the saints of the Most High. Who's the people of the saints of the Most High? Who's that directly referring to? The church. No. Israel. Israel. Whose kingdom is a what kind of kingdom? Everlasting. Everlasting. Everlasting kingdom. And all dominions shall serve and obey him. That kingdom's going to be over all. It's going to have dominion over everything. Okay? Not like the kingdoms before. All right. Now let's look in the book of 2 Samuel. Yes. 2 Samuel chapter 7. 2 Samuel. Second Samuel. Chapter 7. All right, note. Now, we, we had this note. We made note of this before. We have four elements here. Four. What are they? Do you remember? Everlasting throne. Ever, okay, everlasting throne. Everlasting king. Everlasting king. Everlasting reign. Everlasting reign. Not always. All right, we got three out of four. That's 75%. You passed. <laughs> I always 
everlasting throne. All right, now notice, if you will, please, in chapter 7, verse 12. It's right here. You could have just cheated. Look in verse, uh, look in verse I'm going to, for time's sake, look at verse 13. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom. Mark that out. Is it consistent? <laughs> it's very consistent, isn't it? So is it just, now what does this refer to? Does this refer to just the millennial reign? Well, obviously the millennial reign is not. So now what are we talking about? What's that mean? That's what he does to his wife. Everybody's pawing today. <laughs> Everybody's pawing at me. I don't understand. It, um, it includes, it includes the millennial. Well, uh, okay. Past, it, it goes on past that. Okay. So, all right. So we would call that the perfect age of the kingdom. Okay. Uh, if, after the millennial age. That's right. It's called the perfect age. The kingdom continues. Did, didn't we just read it three times? What's the words? Word. And? Okay. Now notice, if you will, verse, uh, verse um, 16. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established before thee. Thy throne shall be established. How many times is that now? How's this kingdom different than the kingdoms that preceded it, the Gentile, the times of the Gentiles? They all come and they all go. They start, they end, they're destroyed, right? Mm -hmm. This kingdom will never end. It'll never be destroyed. Mm -hmm. it, no, no people will take it over. It's, mm -hmm. it's dominion and it's this kingdom, it's throne, it's reign, it's king. For how long? Forever, for everlasting. Okay, well, Pastor, that's that's the Old Testament. Uh, we just can't. Uh, we, we, in the New, it's something different. No, it's not. Look in the book of Luke. Look in the book, book of Luke, if you will, please. That kingdom, once established, goes on for how long? Forever. Right, so from the beginning of the kingdom on the earth. Okay, we need to get that fixed up. From the beginning of the kingdom on the earth, mm -hmm. that's the thousand year millennium. Mm -hmm. Okay, then what happens? Okay, but what about the kingdom? What about it? Is there an intermission? I know Satan's loose twice. Okay, Perfect. Satan's loose right now too. Yeah. yeah does the does the kingdom well, discontinue? Why not? Because I don't know. Sure you do. And then there's the great white throne judgment. Sure, there's, a, there's judgments all the way through, isn't yeah. there? It continues. How many times did we read it? You told me. How long? Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's going to be things that will occur. <coughs> Sure, stays, but the kingdom continues forever. It stays, and, and the properties of it stay. Exactly. How about that? Now look in the book of, of Luke, if you will. The book of Luke, chapter 1. The book of Luke, chapter 1. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Oh, it'd be good if I got in the right chapter. That's looking a lot better. Look in Luke chapter 1, verse 30. The way my mornings went. Okay, <laughs> notice. And the angel. You know, I, I love how God works. <laughs> he, uh, he introduces his kingdom through who? Shepherds in the field. <laughs> he does not, 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 uh, not, um, Jer not, Jer not um, Jerusalem. Not Rome, no. not some significant location, shepherds in a field. Notice, and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, 
For thou hast found favor with God. Who's God working with? This couple from Galilee, carpenter, a spoused wife, humble people, poor people. They don't live in the right side of town, you know. They're from Galilee. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? You know, that kind of thing. Notice in verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and shalt bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Can you imagine receiving a, 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 an address like this? I know it's not. Sorry. It's on my brain. Okay. And verse 32, and he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob. What? Forever. And of his kingdom there shall be? No. no end. Gospels. Same message, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Same message, same king, throne, place. Same description. All right. Now look with me, if you will, what John writes, just for kicks and giggles. Look at the book of Revelation, chapter 11. Revelation, chapter 11. We're par comparing Scripture with Scripture. We've looked at the apocalyptic Scripture of the Old Testament. We've looked at what our Lord, how our Lord was introduced uh, to marry here on the earth. Now we're looking at the New Testament apocalyptic. Um, if you want to turn on the air conditioner, we can do that, Leona. Well, is anybody else being warm? Also. Well, it don't matter. I can turn it on. Yeah, but you let me borrow your phone. You can have all the air conditioning oh, you want. Well, I'm a okay. <laughs> I got me a fan. <laughs> okay. All right, but it just, just hit the button. We're good to go. All right, I'm not a good test for warm or cold. I'm not the guy. So look in Revelation 11, chapter 11, verse 15. Chapter and 7. Chapter 11, oh. verse 15. I don't care what I said before. That's what I want now. <laughs> and the seventh angel sounded, and there was great voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. <laughs> well, what about the church? Verse 16. And the four and twenty elders who sat before God on their thrones. No, they're on the earth bringing in the kingdom. No, they're sitting before the God in heaven. God's going to bring in the kingdom. Christ is going to bring in the kingdom. The church is in heaven. The church is with Jesus Christ. Uh, notice, fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, who art, wast, and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. Okay. I, I hope that this is clear now, <laughs> that this kingdom is... Forever. And what kind of kingdom is it? Everlasting. Thank you. We see that as promised to David in the Davidic covenant. We see this as Jesus Christ comes to the earth. We see this in Daniel's vision, right? We see this in the apocalyptic of John and the book of Revelation. Where's the church? In heaven, not on the earth. Okay. Now, um, that falls eternally. Uh, and we, we want to make sure it is, uh, we understand and remember what the prophets have written in conjunction with the announcement of our Lord Jesus Christ, in conjunction with John. And they all say exactly the what? Same thing. It's, it's not that hard. I mean, you have to really work to misinterpret this. <laughs> okay. uh, it, it just ain't so. You, and and, and I, I, I understand. Well, things are hard to understand. Well, that doesn't make it less true. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I can give you a dandy definition and diagrams and teaching on the Trinity, but I will tell you, I don't understand it. Sorry. I guess I'm dumb and dumber. Both. Okay? Um, does it make it less true? No. Uh, we don't humanize and bring the properties down to make it fit our understanding. That is what goes on in misinterpretation. Okay? I want us to be sure that we understand about the kingdom. And God has had this plan for how long? For the foundation. That's right. Yeah. Why? Because he's sovereign. Mm -hmm. He's sovereign. All right. Now, I want us to appreciate, look in the book of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 17, this is the doxology here in 1 Timothy in result or in, in the um, app of Paul's conversion about the mercy of God's grace. Look in chapter 1, verse 17. Now unto the king, eternal. what kind of king is he? Immortal, eternal, immortal. Eternal. Immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. When did Paul write this? Oh. <laughs> well, he wrote First Timothy uh, when he was still missionarying freely. Um, and he wrote it to the elders of Ephesus, which was, of course, the elders of the, all the Asia Minor churches that happened to be mentioned in the book of Revelation. What is the message here? Think, think this through. What does eternal mean? No, I can't give you that. Okay, infinite beginning through the yeah. moment to infinite ending yeah. Yeah. is eternal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So when's the kingdom begin? Think he's an eternal king. Is he king now? Yeah. We must be because he certainly was king when Paul wrote this, now, not later, now to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Yeah. Are we in the kingdom? Are we in this eternal kingdom? Yeah. Now? Yeah. No, we're not? Oh, yes, we are. Yeah. Paul kind of thinks we are. Yeah, he's, he's actually in charge. <laughs> yeah, oh, he no, is actually in charge. He's sovereign. Started yet. What? What hasn't started? The, what he establishes on earth. That's part of the kingdom. What's the question? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've got you. That's why I brought this message. Yeah, oh, the kingdom starts on the earth. Oh, okay, and it, it continues after that, right, Pastor Ted? No. Yeah, I'm back. That would be incorrect. Why, you, you had it before. You said, what kind of throne? Oh, what kind of king? Well, how do you have an everlasting king without an everlasting kingdom? How do you do that? So what is the kingdom? How does it That's, No, I asked you first. <laughs> All right, let's back up a minute. <clears throat> Jesus Christ said, I give unto them... Blank life. Oh, so when did your salvation begin? It has no beginning. Why not? Because it's eternal. It's 
had a turn on these no beginning of days. Because God has no beginning. Okay. Now, why is it when we come across eternal king, we trip over it and try to give it a beginning? Okay, because usually when people refer to the kingdom, the kingdom, and that's a, that's a mistake right there, they refer to a beginning of time and an ending of time somewhere, uh -huh. and then they begin to put properties to it. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to dispel today. All of this is God's kingdom and his program. God's plan through the ages, just as it says it. See, there you go. The answers are staring you right in the face here. We're, we're not, I'm not bringing anything secret to you or something you didn't know. But knowing and realizing is two different things. I'm, I'm wanting you to think this has to sink in. So we're in the kingdom now. Yes, we're in the kingdom now under the king eternal, invisible. Yeah, he's eternal. Why aren't we in the kingdom? Because well, maybe though. Ben, you're thinking of like on the dispensational term. Yeah, I, I keep thinking when he lands to the earth and starts it. Of the That's the millennial reign part of the kingdom. <laughs> All right. Look in the Gospel of John, chapter 3. Yeah, I, I, and I, you hear this a lot from preachers. And, uh, well, when the kingdom begins... At, wait a minute. What do you mean when it begins? <laughs> we, you just told me it's an, it's an eternal, everlasting... What do you mean begins? You're in trouble. Yeah. All right, now look here. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. This is something you know, right? You've known this passage for how long? So look in the book of John, chapter 3, uh, and let's look in verse 3. Jesus answered him and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot what? See the kingdom of God. Who's teaching? Jesus. When is he teaching? Right All right, in his earthly ministry. Why do I do that? Then. He was the king yeah, of the kingdom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then. Oh, yeah. He's always been the king. There you go. That's right. Because he's the eternal king, so he's always been. Even before the world began, he was always the king. Now you got it. Yeah. It's not something that just happened. It's not something that happens. It's something that's already done and has no beginning. All the above. It is. It is. <laughs> Okay, I, 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 I hope I'm succeeding in how you think about the kingdom now. We're in the kingdom right now. The minute you were born again, you were born into this kingdom. That's why he said, I'm in the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. That's right. Okay? Now, usually when people speak about Jesus being the king of the kingdom... What are they usually referring to? The millennial. The millennial reign. And there's the king on the cross with the crown of thorns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. That's right. The king is the lamb. That's what Revelation tells you. Lamb, capital L. Right? Okay. Let's go to the book. Let's go to the book of Revelation again. Let's go to the book of Revelation again. Okay. Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5 verse 6. Revelation chapter 5 verse 6. And I beheld and lo in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures. Where's this at? Oh, the kingdom's in heaven. Thank you. 
All right, now notice if you want, it was a trick question. She got it. Ask her later. Now notice if you will, uh, okay, in the midst of the altar stood a who? Lamb, capital L. Yeah. Yeah. Is this the same lamb that John introduced in John 1 to Israel when he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. Same person? Yeah. The Lamb. The Lamb is the? King. The Lamb is the King. As though it had been slain, having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. What's the scroll? Title deed of the earth. Mm -hmm. And when he had taken the scroll, title deed of the earth, the four living creatures, the four and twenty elders. <laughs> Who's the four and twenty elders? The church. All right. Where are they? In heaven. In heaven. Fell down before who? The lamb. <laughs> who is the king. The lamb who is the king. Having every one of them harps, golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, every language, and people and nation. And has made us, who's the us? The church. The church, the church where? In heaven. Mm-mm. Nope, you missed it. What's the us part? Who's it written to? Oh. Primary? The seven churches in Asia. Did you not read your chapters one and two? Yeah, yeah. All right, that's who it's written to. Us. And where are those churches located at the time this was written? On earth. On earth. Okay. And thou hast made us under our God a king, a what? A kingdom of priests, and we shall what? Reign. We're going to reign on the earth. Where? With him, with the king. All right, now, got you thinking, I hope. Look in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews, please. We've looked at these chapters before. Look in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Uh, this teaching of Hebrews and this whole economy comes to one of the, uh, one of the uh, most prominent um, uh, applications that Hebrews has. And look here. Wherefore, verse 28, wherefore, receiving a kingdom. Who's receiving a kingdom? Who's the we? What's the we part? The church. Yes, those that come to Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, over there in 22. Now ye are coming to Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. The what? Heavenly Jerusalem. And to an innumerable company of angels. Well, wait a minute. Where's this heavenly Jerusalem? See, it's just going to get more interesting in with the minute, ain't it? In heaven. It's in heaven. Now notice, to the general assembly, the church of the firstborn who are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men, righteous men, made perfect, brought to a finish, and to Jesus, the mediator of the New Testament. All right, that's who that is. Wherefore, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. When? Now. Here on the earth now. Are we in the kingdom? Yes. It says we've received it. Mm -hmm. wow. So when we're, when we're looking at the kingdom together and we're looking at God's sovereign program, Understand it all applies to you and I right here, right now, because we're in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. We happen to be in the church phase of the kingdom. Mm 
the age of grace, the dispensation of grace, where he's calling out his church. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're in the kingdom. Okay? So when we talk about these properties, and we're talking about what's going to happen and what's going on, we're in the kingdom. It applies directly to us. All right, now let me go back to the book of Revelation, if you will, please. The book of Revelation, chapter 20. In chapter 20, we're told about what? The thousand-year reign. And the, 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 uh, the kingdom continues, just like it is right now. But there are things that happen. Satan is loosed. Uh, he deceives the nations. And there's a real quick war. Fire from heaven. Crispy critters. That's going to be an instant battle. That's going to take place real fast. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. Verse 10, and brimstone and the false prophet. They're dealt with. Then there's the great white throne. Does that mean that the kingdom is interrupted? No, it's ongoing. This is all part of God's plan in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay? Yes. All right, now look in verse chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the what? Oh, didn't we mention the new Jerusalem before? Coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for us. Well, Pastor Ted, this is all very nice and very revealing. What's the point? Here's the point. Finally, right? Verse 3, but I had to help you through it. It's not my fault. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, whose voice is this? God's voice. He's got something to say. Pay attention, right? That's what that word behold means. Behold, the tabernacle of God is where? This is the prerogative of the king and the kingdom. And he will dwell with them. He will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. That's God's prerogative in his kingdom. Is that being fulfilled today? No. Yes. Well, which is it, Ben? <laughs> yes. John 1.14. Uh -huh. And the word, Logos, became flesh and did what? Tabernacled among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of what? And Jesus said, at that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, ye in me. And what? Me. Is he with us today? Yes. He's the king of the kingdom. Yes, he is. In the grace phase of his plan through the ages. Mm -hmm. Okay? I think so, yes. <laughs> I'm going to like that. As I'm as going to really like that rapture as part. As okay. So, all right. So do, do you now see why Daniel can say, the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men to Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. Right? The most high ruleth in the kingdom of men. Daniel is affirming the kingdom's here right now. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar got a preview when he walked out and said, This kingdom have I made by my hands. And he ended up what? Seven years eating hay. Yeah. I'll just put it that way. Okay? God had to make that clear. Seven years. Right? Okay? And to Belshazzar, no, that hand just wrote your future on the wall. <laughs> He's running. He's running the kingdoms, and your your time is done. You've been weighed in the balance and found wanting. Now, what about today? 
I mean, we've had a pandemic and everything seems to be out of control. Uh, let's bring the kingdom in. That's the answer. No, the kingdom's already here. This is all part of God's sovereign program. For what reason? What this voice says from heaven. The tabernacle of God is where? With men and he will dwell with them. What's always been the problem? Men, not God. Right? He had Israel, a kingdom of priests. And what did they do? They apostatized. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The church today, what's happening? He's yeah. called them out. And what happens to the age of the church? They apostatize. Okay. Um, God is busy in his kingdom right now. Okay. And what goes on in the kingdom, all these properties, it pertains to us. Okay. Because we are a kingdom of priests. Okay. Ben just woke up. All right. That's a, that's a, it's been a oh, month. I'm over. It's I never do have it's enough time for any of this. Okay. Exactly. He is the prophet, the king, and the priest. Right. The lamb reigns. Yeah. Okay. Just if you want to sum this all up today, the lamb reigns. Why? So God can tabernacle and dwell with his people. I will be their God and they shall be my people. We didn't even get a chance to look at that part. I think I'm full enough today. All right, Ben. I'm going to take that as a compliment. It is a compliment. Okay, let's look to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our gracious God and heavenly Father, we come before you. And Father, we thank you for who you are. Father, we thank you that the Lamb is indeed the King and that we are in him and he is in us. Father, we pray that in all things Christ would have the preeminence in our lives. And Father, we, we praise you that the way to the, to the kingdom is through the cross. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Okay, Hills, we'll see you Tuesday, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. You both look better today, by the way. I think you're feeling better, aren't you? I was better for a while. You were better for a while? That's what viruses do. You, you, you feel better for a minute and then, hmm, comes back. I mean, I got it. Okay, Carol, we'll continue to pray as, you, as you're struggling there, okay? Uh, no, as far as I know, he's not. All right. All right. God bless you. We'll see you on Tuesday. I don't think he's doing that well. Of course, you're not supposed to go out and mow the lawn in 170 degree index either.